in real estate, our services are an experience. We need to worry about how the customer is feeling. We always need to have in the back of our minds and everywhere, how are they feeling? How are we making them feel with everything, like our marketing, social media, when we're on the phone with them, when we're texting them, email, everything. What is the experience like from the very beginning of them getting to know us to the very end? Hey guys, welcome back. I'm your host, Matt Fagioli, and today we have a return guest, one of my favorite humans on the planet. Everybody, welcome back. Tristan Omada. How you doing, man? Good, man. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy man, to I... be at your farm virtually. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're kind of on the farm for a minute. And uh welcome to the man, farm. I, <laughs> I look forward to your updates so much. And for the agents and brokers in the triangle who know who you are. Guys, if you don't know, Tristan Amata is one of the most famous agents, notorious agents in the country, you know, running a huge team on the West Coast and running the Lab Code Agents Group. And that always gets people. They're like, I don't, I don't know that Tristan guy. But and they would say Lab Code. It's like, oh, that, you yeah, know, so everybody funny. knows, everybody so knows cool. Lab Codes. So I always look forward to your updates. You're always so tuned in to what's going on in the business and you know, there's there's so much going on right now. There's so much to, you know talk about with DOJ and all that stuff. So I mean, we don't we don't have to go there, but but I, I want to get your sense, and I want you to share with everybody listening. You know, just what keeps you up at night? What are you thinking about right now? You know, what's your what's your take on where we are? You know, I'll, I'll start with I'll start with something that I've been noticing with our with with in, the industry as a whole in real estate, and that's you always have a division between those people that that know they're going to make it no matter what is thrown their way. And then you always have the rest of them, right? Whether they say, I'm not going to make it, I'm not sure. I kind of bundle everyone there. And the difference, I think, is that some people are built for challenges and some people don't even know they're built for challenges until it hits them in the face. And then they're like, oh, damn. Right. And then they surprise themselves, which is the beautiful piece, right? It's life. And the bigger challenge that I see is that some of these agents that think they've got what it takes actually don't. Mm -hmm. And I see this with big companies that hire us on the, on the agency side to come in and, and help them. And the very first thing I notice is something very similar to what agents do. And big, these are big multi-million dollar companies. And then you have agents and they always start the same way. They're like, can you help us grow our audience, grow our community, grow all this great stuff? And I'm like, yeah, show me what you got. And they're like, well, this is our idea. We've got this, 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 and this, and we want to show people how cool this, this, and this, and this is, this is what we want to do. And then you get the agents which is like, yeah, I want to blow up my audience. I'm like, what do you want to start? Well, I, I, I have 50 million in volume last year and I'm on a, I've closed 12 transactions in the last three. And look at this listing that I have. It's so cool. It's got its location. And we start with features and that's where you lose everyone. You're only going to gain probably 10 to 15% of the audience you're actually trying to target rather than the bigger group and the bigger group is all on emotion. And I was writing down the things that we're going to focus on just to kind of reiterate and, and make sure we're heading in the right direction. And I wrote this out two weeks ago, just, just for us internally. And it was all from a letter. Dude, you're going to love this letter. I'm going to, let me grab this letter. And I found it by accident. All right, let me grab this. And for, for everyone who's listening in, I'll explain the letter to you. And it was from me reading Howard Schultz, uh, the, 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 um, the guy who created Starbucks as we know it. He bought six Starbucks and then blew it up, that guy. He wrote a letter to the board. I'm going to message it to you, okay, right there in the chat. Cool. He wrote a letter to the board of Starbucks because he just stepped out as CEO. He's no longer part of the board. 
and it was addressed to the executives and the board. This was February 7th. Dude, not even, not this year. It's this year. All right. And there are a couple of points on the letter that may, it's two pages. And there are a couple of points that stood out for me. And number one was on page one towards the bottom. It's in the, it's titled the soul of the brand. That's the title of this letter. It says to the leadership team and the board. By the way, you guys can Google it. He put it up on LinkedIn. And that's yeah, where I got we'll it. Put it. We'll put it in the show notes too. And he's talking about how Starbucks is losing its soul. It's losing its direction. It's losing the love that he grew this whole company with. That's where it starts. The emotion, the piece that matters the most. He's like, you guys are breaking it down to just numbers. This isn't numbers. Mm. This is like one of the most successful CEOs ever, right? And he says this at the bottom, and he's talking about the soul. He says, it doesn't emerge from the company's strategy or tactical execution. It's born out of love, of passion, and the responsibility of its leaders to simply do the right thing. Wow. Dude, I'm like, dude, that, that's, that feels biblical, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it is. Right? Right? And then there's another piece to it, second page, one sentence, because we hear this a lot in real estate. We hear this a lot in business. Follow up, follow up, follow up. You got to follow up. And, and he breaks it down. He's like, it's nurturing, not by intent. Right. You're just nurturing its people, nurturing the company out of love, out of passion, out of just doing the right thing. It's like it's nurturing not by intent, but by its very true nature. Meaning you do it because you care. You do it because you've you've created something that's so sincere and so powerful the way that it is that you show up because you need to show up because it's your duty. Mm -hmm. And I think Man. we missed that. We missed that whole piece. And that letter made me reflect back and say, well, hold on, where, where, where are we, <laughs> right? Where are we? And let me tell you, when I looked in, I'm like, I didn't like what I saw because I'm always looking to improve things. And I read further and I listened to one of the podcasts he was recently on as well. It's a three hour podcast. I'll send it to you so you can clip it in. And the whole three hours is amazing. And in it, the whole, the whole idea that he expresses is, is saying Starbucks is an experience. And I thought, damn, that's beautiful because in real estate, our services are an experience. Mm. We need to fix the experience. We need to worry about how the customer is feeling. We always need to have in the back of our minds and everywhere, how are they feeling? How are we making them feel with everything, like our marketing, social media, when we're on the phone with them, when we're texting them, email, everything. What is the experience like from the very beginning of them getting to know us to the very end? Mm. And that's where I go back to these companies and agents who come in and say, can you help us? And they want to start with features. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> You just don't matter. Like, this is not how you're going to capture people. You capture them through this emotion, through this promise of this journey in the experience of becoming who they want to become because of your service or product. And then you show them how you're going to do it with the features. Mm -hmm. So we've been looking internally and saying, what can we do better when it comes to this process? And I thought, well, let me refine our audiences. Let me really identify who are we really trying to target here? And for our different businesses, right? If I'm going real estate as a team, who am I trying to target? Number one, what do they like? What do they dislike? What are they vacation? What do they buy? Right? What are they into? What's the what's the family size if I'm going after a family, right? Or are they single? And then I outline that in the same way on the agency side, who is my target audience, right? With, with helping out follow-up boss and helping them grow. It's like, do I want to help out companies that are in growth mode, smaller, 
growing up, like why Lopo follow all these great companies. I'm like, yeah, I think that's my sweet spot. Okay. What are their challenges? Right. And that's helped a lot just over the last few days in getting more clarity. I said, yeah, that, that is, that is my strength here. Let's outline that better. And then quickly focusing on trust and focusing on building that trust. And that doesn't come from you showing your features. That does not come from you only showing consistently your wins, right? I think it comes from solving the problem that your target audience has and you showing that consistently. And that's a delicate thing. So when I'm going to agents or companies and saying, okay, we're ready, let's Let's create the video sequences, right? On Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, or email campaigns or build a community. How do we want to show up, right? Yeah. And it's got to be a combination. But mostly you build the trust through showing that your product, your services work, but not by you saying it. It's by what other people are saying about your services, about your product. And then they have to be saying, that thing that solves a problem for other people just like them, right? That's what we're looking at and saying, are we doing that well enough? Are we, are we, are we connecting with the right audience through that creation of building trust through that example? And then are we trying to cover a big, too big of an audience instead? Or this is what uh, Seth Godin says. He says, Go to the smallest viable market. Yes. And and then if you do so damn well there, well, great. That means you're going to do well. Again, Matt, it's biblical, right? Where mm -hmm. he says, I don't remember the verse. I don't remember how it goes, but it's more along the lines of, he said, blessed you for doing great in this small thing that I gave you, right? Now I'm going to give you more. Mm-hmm. That's right. And so it's the same thing in marketing. We've got to prove ourselves in the smallest viable markets so we can fix our, our kinks and make sure that it works and get amazing people talking great things about us and then growing. And we start the reverse. I remember when I started in real estate, I'm right in the middle of Ventura County and LA County. So we've got millions of people and I'm like, oh, I'm going to cover everything mm -hmm. that, that didn't work out at all <laughs> so i had to be like oh maybe maybe i'll just cover my block that's literally what i had to come down to right you know and i i i i never i'm a broken record for people who listen to me talk about it but like you know other than the biggest the biggest the biggest teams every agent in the world could make all the money they ever needed to make the best living ever from a hundred people always talk about this top 100 if you if you did a transaction or re were referred a transaction from each one of those hundred people, you're talking about a million dollars in revenue or what? I mean, more business than you could ever need. And I think if everybody would just boil it down to like, how do I love those hundred people at the highest level all year long? How many times can I? interact with them how many times can i have lunch or coffee with them how, you know all those things a hundred people you know and then you keep upgrading that not upgrading but you, you're trading people out people come in and out of your life people move whatever whatever it is but so the list changes and, and as you level up as a human sometimes the people on that list level up too but at the end of the day, it's like that, you know, that's all the work in the world right there. And everybody's always going looking for the other shiny object or the other people or the the million people in Ventura, whatever. A hundred people. Like that's all that's your to me, that's the number when you talk about Seth Godin's, you know, minimum number. It's like, and it starts with 10. Maybe you don't know a hundred people that might buy a house from you yet if you're new or something like that. But Anyway, that's when you talk about it, that's what comes to mind for me. That makes a lot of sense, dude. And I think we we overthink it. But if we're if we simplify it and look at our top 100 and make sure that we we refine the experience that these 100 are going to have in being close to us, we can then do a great job showing it to the rest of the world. Mm. And so for me, 
for me, the the whole Howard Schultz thing that I was reading, and it was like, it just reminded me that the experience is what matters the most. What experience are people having with me when they encounter me at different stages in in what they're looking? Because I don't even know where they're at. Some are at the very beginning, some are in the middle, some are towards the end, right? And I have to show up every time, right? Because that's how opportunities show up. If you show up, well, the opportunity will present itself because then the opportunity feels like, oh, this might be the right person, right? Mm -hmm. So has a lot to do with attitude too, man. But man, you, you've got to care about people. That's why I loved it. And I'm like, this is great. This is a beautiful thing. And as we're wrapping up, I'm thinking, as we're wrapping up through these ideas that I was going through, we still have to tell a great story. We have to lead with empathy. And I think the biggest one that we sometimes forget is that marketing is about creating change. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's not about changing us. It's about changing the people that are watching because they want change. Right. They want to get from where they're at to where they want to be. And they, they want to use someone that can help them get there the fastest, the least expensive with the best results. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the bottom line. That's the storytelling has to focus around that. Dude, so I simplified it, but that's what I was thinking. No, it, dude, you nailed it. And you nailed it in a short amount of time. You know, all this stuff swirling around, it all, it still all comes back to love your people, build trust, you know, all the mechanics and the, the dollars and the transactions and all that stuff takes care of itself. If you love your people. Yeah. That's it, man. That's it. And I think you do such a great job of loving on people that people connect with you quickly. Mm, dude, best, shortest, most concise, most powerful podcast ever. I thank you so much always for coming back. I know you're, you know, everybody hearing this is going to find it a refreshing blast of cold air on a hot summer day. And uh, <laughs> the guys on your go. Farm. Yeah. Guys, go love your people, and we'll see you back here real soon. Thanks, Tristan. Bye.